Ah, so when you think of a colonial empire, you probably think first of Sweden, the greatest colonial empire ever to exist upon the face of Earth. Such a beautiful country, a beautiful empire. Well, I guess it's not really that big of a colonial empire, but it's something, it's, it's something. Today we play a mod that's basically, what if Sweden won that one war they fought against Russia or whatever, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it is though. The one where Russia took St. Petersburg and named it St. Petersburg. Yeah, that, that didn't happen. So now Russia is not really unified and we own uh, Iceland and Greenland. For some reason we don't own Norway though, which is concerning. But I have plans, great plans, to potentially um, expand our colonial empire, maybe into China. I don't know, I, I, I think I have a lot of ambitions. <laughs> And also, I have a hard time deciding when to do a part two, so if you end up enjoying this video, remember to give it a like, and if it gets 1500 likes, I will make a part two, yeah. Also, it's kind of weird, there's the Chinese Republic and then the Republic of China. I don't know, I don't know how I feel about that. I assume it's just like communist China, but it's only there. And I guess Italy's not going to war with Ethiopia. Oh. Oh, Italy. And Germany. <laughs> oh, Turkey. Oh, oh no. Oh no. But yeah, unfortunately we might be overpowered, but we have the Swedish Depression, which weakens us greatly. And we only have 40 factories anyways. I guess that kind of hurts. I thought we would be kind of a powerhouse, but not really. But Norway and Denmark are our puppets, so at least we have that. Estonia and Latvia, puppets too. The Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth survived though, so that's kind of blessed. That's very blessed. I, I, I like that. They're, they're probably our friends, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, I guess we'll deal with the Great Depression. Yeah, because we can't use a single factory. That's that's not good. Uh, um, and the factions are very interesting, too. We have the Third International here. The British Commonwealth, of course. And then, like, the European Entente with Italy and France. We have the League of Warsaw, and then we have pretty much Austria-Hungary and the North German Confederation. Interesting stuff. I don't know where we really stand in the world. I guess Britain's kind of our only friend, but I kind of want to take out Britain and establish my own colonial empire, but I guess we can go after France instead and steal their stuff, even though they don't really have much stuff, except this, and then we could use this to invade China, ah. Ah, yes, and we can choose who wins, obviously, the Imperial Bloc for the Sweden, yes. Oh, Polish-Lithuania, ah, yes. An ally in the continent, I guess, against the Soviet Union. Wait, I swear these guys weren't the Soviet Union before. Oh wow, this Chinese Republic is kind of doing an okay job fighting all the other Chinas at once. Very interesting. Yeah, they just have a generic focus tree though. I know Japan has a focus tree, so they're probably gonna do something. It looks like they're gonna annex Taiwan. Oh, war in the Middle East? Oh. I also really like how Syria and Assyria are in a faction. I, I like that. Oh, wait, Norway? This isn't very good. I mean, we can't join the Civil War because there's not enough world tension. And it's not like I can artificially spike world tension by justifying on random people, so... I don't think there's anything I can really do here. I guess I could lend lease them stuff, but I don't know. Oh wait, they won! That was- that was very short. Okay, yeah, you're not getting that lend lease anymore. And the Italian Union's getting destroyed. They're an easy target. There aren't any communists nearby. Wait, the Belgium government folded to the French? Interesting, I guess. Um, yeah, France might be slightly powerful today, possibly. Well, we'll have to see. I know they have a focus tree. I don't know how much they're gonna do, though. And we've finally done all of our economy focuses. We just had to do some of these focuses and raise our stability above 80% to do this one, and now we can fix our economy, we can start doing stuff. Even with the broken economy, we've at least got to nine usable ones. Soon we'll have a lot more, though. Of course, that was a big setback, and we haven't really been able to do anything for a long time, but it's only, like, halfway through 38. Oh, 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 wait a second. I didn't realize that the random South German Confederation had a focus tree. Also, as Sweden, we have a pretty decent navy. It's actually a kind of nice one. It's not the largest navy in the world, but it's by no means nothing. And I'm going to build some heavy ships to add to it to make it even better. We'll have to invade Britain eventually, you know? So we gotta, we gotta do something. Yeah, he's definitely gonna lose here, but that this could be an interesting playthrough too. Maybe I should do that some. Time, and I just won't be stupid and declare war on everybody at once. Wow, and look at this. We can do the legacy of careless Rex and get plus 
15% division organization. Uh, we're gonna go straight for that focus as we justify war against Russia. Uh, we, we need to invade them and deal with them preemptively, even though we own everything we want over here. They're obviously going to attack us, so we have to attack them first. Before they have prepared, even though they've had more military factories than us for longer. I don't know. But we already have an advisor who gives us plus 10% infantry division attack and plus 15% artillery attack, so that's already pretty good, and it's only gonna get better once we get the 15% extra division organization. This could really start to become overpowered. Wait, and there's another focus we can do? To get another 15% division organization? Wait. Okay, I'm actually going to um, delay the war against the Soviets just because I realized we can't win the air war, so yeah, that's gonna be a problem. We'll just have to build a lot of planes so we can win the air war and then we can invade them. Because even if we have massive buffs to organization, if we can't win the air war, it's not, not good for the new Swedish colonial empire. Okay, well, it's time to attack. I hope we're strong. We have a plus 15% division organization here, another plus 15% division organization here, a plus 8 division organization here. I, I feel like we should be set, I don't know, at least in terms of division organization, if anything. I, I, don't, I don't know, that's not the most important stat, but it's actually... Maybe it, it probably is the most important. I guess I could just move my front line like out of these countries over here too and just not call them in. And we're winning the air war. We're losing about two planes for every five they lose. It's going good there. Oh wow, Persia joined us in the south. Yeah, this is good. Okay, well they've become really weak. I guess they attacked into us for a while and lost a lot of men, but I don't know. They shouldn't be this weak. <laughs> Oh yes, Siberia has come to the rescue by helping distract the Soviets. I assume they want to reunify Russia. I, I unfortunately probably won't give them the full privilege of that, but at least they're friends in a trying time. We really just need to get out of this state because this supply zone here is terrible. <laughs> There we go, nice, nice. Okay, well now we have integrated all of Russia into the new Swedish Empire. Of course, they're not cores, but because of all the collaboration governments I did, I've got 75% compliance on everything. It's quite a bit. It pretty much makes it so I need no occupation law, really. You know, we will get it. We'll get a ton of manpower and factories from them. We've doubled our military factories, yes. And Great Britain has been in a war with Austria-Hungary for a very long time. France is kind of threatening them too. So so I think we have a decent chance at invading them. A decent chance. It might not be a great chance, but we could may maybe pull this off. We'll at least try. Okay, and here this goes. This might not succeed. I don't know. I have faith in the Swedish Empire, though. We defeated the Soviets, and now the people like us more than they did their former rulers. I assume the people of Great Britain will feel the same way, of course. So we preemptively have anti-air in all of our divisions here, just in case we lose the air war. I should probably have put some more anti-air in there, but I, I don't know. I, I don't want to mess with my divisions too much. I don't know. This is going to have to be a really fast conquest if we 
want this to be successful. Yeah, let's let's do this though. We will have to have victory in the English Channel because we have to take the ports and the airfields. We have to take the airfields especially too because our anti-air can only do so much against Britain's superior air force there. It's uh, ours is nothing compared to theirs. So yeah, we're destroying them in the skies though. This is good to see. I guess if we keep this up. We might not have to invade the South. Okay, we finally got the naval supremacy. France joined the war though, like a second ago. So they didn't contribute to it really. I, it was mainly the cipher that I just released that seems to have given us the supremacy. So it's now time to act extremely quickly. <laughs> So this is really good, mainly because we've got so many of their air bases, and, and we just took another one. Oh, soon they won't be able to fight back at all, really. This is perfect. We needed to do this, because their air force is so big. Because they have so many planes, this is just necessary that we took all this stuff. <laughs> and now this is it. This is the rise of the great Swedish colonial empire. This is it. All that belonged to Britain now belongs to us. Well, France is gonna take some stuff, but uh, that's... It's nothing. And my dream has finally been achieved. We've created a pretty cool colonial empire, not to be confused with France's one, which I guess maybe they should be our next target if we want to expand even further. I guess they have quite the powerful faction. Well, I assume Italy is probably just occupying a lot of this stuff and isn't, and doesn't have the strongest army, but at least we have quite a bit. It's, it's pretty nice after all. French Navy is now the most powerful in the world, I think, or maybe the US. Yeah, probably the US, but yeah. I guess that's it for now. That was interesting, and I guess I'll see you all next time.